Hi, everyone. We would like to welcome you to a short series of interviews with a variety of guests that are joining us during Recovery Month and Day to celebrate recovery and highlight that recovery is possible. Besides being a celebration, Recovery Month also showcases that recovery is a pathway that one cannot walk alone. Even though recovery works in parts through individual efforts, the soil and structural environments are essential. Therefore, we should put efforts in creating the right environment to recover by reducing stigma and allowing a person in recovery to grow in their own pace. Before moving in, on to the interviews, I would briefly like to introduce ourselves. My name is Cressida and I'm representing the World Federation Against Drugs, which is a multilateral community with almost 370 non-governmental organizations and over 500 individuals from 64 countries. Our members represent all regions of the world. Our common aim is to strengthen prevention, increase access to treatment and promote recovery. And we believe that only together we can work towards reaching this goal on a global level with a gender and child sensitive perspective. My dear colleague Mulka is representing our WFAD Gender Working Group. And I would like to hand the word over to her to introduce herself and the working group. Everybody. My name is Mulka Nisik, and as Cressida said, I'm today on behalf of the Gender Working Group, which was created within the WFAD to specifically address the drug use and addiction among women, gender-based violence, and also its correlations with the healthcare treatment and recovery. And thank you so much, Brendan, for uh, taking the time to join us for this Recovery Month series. And uh, please introduce yourself and the organization. Great, yeah. So I'm, I'm Brandon Bergman. Uh, I'm a clinical psychologist by training. Um, I'm the Associate Director at the Recovery Research Institute at the Mass General Hospital and an Assistant Professor of Psychology um, in the Department of Psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. My own um, personal research uh, focuses um, on um, recovery support services, community-based recovery support services, social technologies, and um, the life stage of, of emerging uh, adulthood. And, um, and so in, in practice, what that looks like is I, I really care quite a bit about freely accessible online recovery support services, like online communities, online recovery support meetings, um, and how they can be used to increase access to um, to recovery supports for individuals with substance disorder or seeking recovery from substance disorder and so on. Um, and uh, uh, in terms of the Recovery Research Institute itself, um, it's been, um, it was founded in 2012 uh, by, by Dr. John Kelly, who is the director uh, and a mentor and senior colleague of mine. It's actually our, our 10 year anniversary uh, this year. Uh, so it's been, it's been 10 years. Um, and we are, we're part of the Department of Psychiatry uh, at the Massachusetts General Hospital, which is in Boston, uh, Massachusetts. Um, and the only other thing by way of introduction that I uh, should mention is that we, when we, we will often refer to ourselves as the RRI, that's our acronym, Recovery Research Institute RRI. Um, and at the RRI, it, the RRI is both the name of our research program. So there are many of us that are research faculty and we have research coordinators. And we um, work to get, we get funding from the NIH, especially from like the, uh, the National Institutes of Health and the NIAAA in particular, uh, and NIDA um, and, and some other um, NIH institutes, as well as state um, grants from the Department of Public Health here in Massachusetts and so on and so forth. So we have, that's all of our own original research. The RRI is also the name of our public health funded initiative, which is a, a philanthropically funded uh, initiative to take all of the research on treatment and recovery from substance disorder, not just ours, but research that's occurring inter nationally, internationally, um, across, uh, across the globe, uh, really, um, specifically on how people change uh, when it comes to substance use uh, and other co-occurring disorders, treatment, recovery support services in particular, all the different pathways. Um, and that initiative, the mission of that is to summarize, synthesize, disseminate, and to summarize, synthesize, translate, and disseminate all of this research across the globe um, for a variety of stakeholders. So yes, other scientists, um, as well as providers, clinicians, recovery support providers, um, but also um, policymakers and individuals in recovery uh, or seeking recovery and their families. So a variety of stakeholder groups. And I'm happy to talk a little bit more about the various initiatives that we have in that larger initiative. But when we say the RRI, we both are talking about our original research and the faculty and the work that we do there, and also this philanthropically funded public health 
initiative to take everybody's work in this area across the globe and really translate it into formats that we think or hope are, are more fun and engaging for the general public. Thank you for the great sure. introduction and congratulations yeah. on your anniversary, first Thanks. of all. <laughs> um, so you mentioned about these initiatives. Um, is there a way that people can approach you to kind of, you know, submit an initiative and or are these initiatives already kind of selected by yourself and you're spreading it out to um, viewers and, as you said, the different uh, stakeholders? And how are you spreading it out? Like, how are you? Um, yeah, providing yeah. people with this information. Yeah, so so it's a the answer to your question is really a both and. A, a most of the initiatives we have developed in house, but but we have a, we have a scientific advisory board. Um, so individuals, uh, so uh, uh, Bill White, William White, uh, uh, who's very well known theoretician, historian, legend uh, in the field, Greg Williams. Uh, documentarian, but then there, there are um, scientists, David Best, uh, uh, Tom Horvath, I'm, I'm forgetting people, but so, so our initiatives um, are also helped or supported by the Scientific Advisory Board, who we meet with um, a couple of times a year to get their input as, as, as experts. Um, and, and I would say, so, so we are, those initiatives, I'll, I'll start there, those initiatives are our bulletin, our, 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 our monthly bulletin. There we take um, the latest science on uh, treatment and recovery from substance disorder. Um, and we have a newsletter that consists of usually about eight uh, of, of the latest studies. Um, and we have a team of, of writers and lots of us are involved. It's a, it's a very much a team effort there. Um, and we take those papers and we create, again, what we hope are engaging research summaries with lots of visuals and explanations. And at the very end, they have, um, we have what's, what's it's, um, a bottom, it's what we call it our bottom line and where we have different take home messages for each of these stakeholder groups. So for people in recovery, seeking recovery, their family members, um, providers, clinicians, other kinds of recovery support service providers, people who are, are uh, really involved in, in the provision of services, um, other scientists, and then also policymakers. Um, and so for each of them, we really do try to cater to all these different stakeholder groups. So the bulletin, um, and all, it's free, it's freely available. Um, we, it's, everything we do is completely not for profit. Um, it, there's no, we have no financial incentives. It doesn't cost money for anybody to receive uh, this science-based information. All they have to do is go to the website, recoveryanswers.org, and you'll see a spot to, to sign up, email, um, and then you'll get a, this, the RI bulletin in your inbox um, uh, once a month. Um, even for, for recovery month, we had a special edition um, the, the, where we um, reviewed, we sort of did like a top 10 uh, most popular articles from this past year, which we often will do for our a, a sort of special edition of recovery month. Um, so that's the, 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 that's sort of our primary quote unquote initiative. Um, we also have uh, social media channels. So that, that, that the, the website is a place where people can go, but we also have social media channels. Twitter is probably like our primary social media outlet at recovery answers is the, is the Twitter handle. Um, but our name is recovery research. Institute. You could search either one of those. Um, and all of the articles that we're covering the bulletin, we also will tweet about. We have a, a, an awesome health communications manager, Chris Rattan, who really does a fantastic job uh, leading the way on all of that. Um, we also have a LinkedIn page. I'm a little bit less involved with that, but I know there's a lot of cross posting. So if people are more comfortable on LinkedIn than Twitter, pretty much everything um, that we do on Twitter is also getting posted on LinkedIn and vice versa. Again, there might be some things that are just on one versus the other, um, but we have both those and we do have a Facebook page uh, as well. Um, and then, so, so those are our initiatives. And I, I would say um, in terms of like being open to, to collaborating with outside folks, we definitely do uh, pride ourselves in that, but everything would end up going through us and being approved by us and working with us as the kind of primary megaphone for any initiative. Um, but if people are interested and have different kinds of, especially like public health, focused initiatives when it comes to recovery. We're always looking to collaborate. And if people are, are trying to promote something that they're doing for the good of their community, if it's um, not-for-profit public health, reach out to us. We're always open um, to, to, to those kinds of things. Um, and I think the best way to get in touch with us is to just send an email to info at recoveryanswers.org. 
Um, that's, and then it will go to our health communications manager, Chris Rattan, um, and he'll help vet those things. And we take everything, every email that we get, we, we take a look at and we, we respond to everybody that we can, pretty much everybody. So that's, that's what I, we're definitely open to those initiatives, but we do have these sorts of initiatives that are ours and uh, our monthly staples of, of what we do. So I think that's a good place for me to stop. I could keep talking, but I'll stop. <laughs> no, that's really good. I mean, you have answered a couple of our questions <laughs> immediately. Yeah, sorry. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm but chatty, but sorry. I, what I also wanted to know is, uh, do you have any plans for the future? What's your vision moving forward? And uh, uh, what, what's actually the, the background of all of that? Yeah. Um, so the, the background is, uh, it's been very interesting for me because I started as a, essentially as a postdoctoral fellow when John founded the Recovery Research Institute. So, uh, and the RRI, we're part of the Center for Addiction Medicine um, at Mass General Hospital. Um, and I don't know all of the ins and outs, uh, nor do I necessarily think I could certainly, I, I, that I would be okay to share everything about how it all came to be. But I do know that this was John Kelly's vision. Um, I don't think that he would um, mind me saying that. Um, and, and the idea was that there was this major need in the field to get science-based or science-backed or empirically vetted or supported information about how people change uh, once diagnosed or, or, or with a substance disorder or, or, or when substance use is getting in the way of their life, right? Which we would refer to broadly as recovery. Um, and so it was a, 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 it was a lot, there was, a, there was a, an emerging body of science um, in the 90s and 2000s around people that were primarily doing work that was NIH funded on mutual help organizations, in particular 12-step organization AA. So there was this like groundswell of, uh, in the US and certainly in, in other countries as well, but in the US of, of NIH funded work, um, but where it was, there were challenges about how to get that science out to the general public. Uh, and to really create these partnerships among and between the researchers, the providers, the recovery support and community uh, and treatment providers, and individuals themselves and policymakers. And so um, John founded the RRI with this um, scientific advisory board back in 2012. Um, again, like I said, 10, 10 years ago. And it's just grown from there and we're, we're changing. It, we really think of it as a dynamic process where we're very open. I know I speak for all of us in terms of we are constantly thinking what is the best way and the most engaging way to take the science, which, hey, I'm a scientist. I'm not talking you know, any crap about science. I love science, but it could be dry and overly technical sometimes. And for it to be able to really reach and engage the general public, we have to, to translate that into formats that are more engaging and just more consumable. Uh, people that are listening to this might know, and I, I think that there really needs to be something done about this. I, I'm trying to, I won't get on a soapbox for too long, but there are people that want to learn about the science, but they're behind paywalls, right? And, and, and publishing companies will create these pay for models. And unless you're at some academic institution that pays for access, a lot of people don't have access to the studies themselves. So that's another thing that we do as a service, as a public health um, not-for-profit service, right? Is to take that science and give the public access to that information. It's like, what do we know about the science? So I think that was in many ways, John's vision. And it's really just grown over time where back then I was, I was one of two postdocs and there were two research coordinators uh, and John. Um, and now we're a team of, we just had our, our, our team meeting today. I think there were like 28 or 26 or 28 of us. We're faculty members, postdocs, research coordinators. We have people that are specifically working on the communication side of what we do. Um, so we've really grown in, in a lot of ways. And I think I'll end the, that, that answer your question where it's sort of, how do I see the future? I know one of the things that we're trying to work on is um, more um, modern contemporary communication media formats. So um, like one of the things that listeners probably have at least heard of if they've not experienced is TikTok, right? Um, and I know it's sort of popular among young folks, but it, it, it could be very engaging for lots of people. I was a co-author on a paper um, led by Alex Russell, who's a colleague of mine, looking at depictions of recovery on TikTok, for example. So, and, and in my experience, TikTok, um, while I'm sure it's not without its it, it sort of nuances that everybody needs to be mindful of, 
it's got this multimodal audio visual format with music and video and then there's text that people can use and so it's just very engaging there's a reason that it's popular and i think it's because it taps into all these different media in one fell swoop in one platform and so i think just to come back to what our our vision is i know it's it's not we're not necessarily going to work working with tiktok i didn't mean that but we're trying to figure out what is the best way to take the science and really engage people. We do have these bulletins, but there's a lot of text there and we try to create as many visuals as possible, but we're starting to think about video and, and how can we use video and what are the best ways to use video and audio and then with text maybe in that context too, to really engage uh, multiple stakeholders in multiple different ways. So I think that's what I would say. And I, I do think I, I, I speak for all of us that is on the public health initiative side of what we do. And we're really trying to work um, on that is to, is to really create new, fun, modern, contemporary formats to get the science-based information out there. That would be very exciting to see that actually, to see all the scientific papers in just a, a video. And I think that would help a lot of people to understand what it actually is. Um, so that's a great initiative I'm looking forward to <laughs> yeah. when it's out yeah. there. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned like um, before that you have done something for recovery month on the website with news yeah. bulletin and all. Yeah. Um, on our side, as this is also part of the recovery month, we were wondering if you have any message for recovery month. Yeah, I, I, for me, I, I think it's an, in terms of like how we as a broad field can help as many people initiate and sustain recovery over time, it's like all hands on deck, right? It's treatment, it's community-based recovery support, it's public policy, it's science, it's community outreach. And for me, I think that we are more likely to be able to make the largest impact when we all work together, right? And figure out like what's, what, what, what are, what, what's our common ground? And if we do have differences in terms of how we want to approach this, talking about those differences, figuring out where we do have common ground and, and, and establishing some consensus for the greater good. That's part A and part B is, I mean, I just sort of said this, I think science has a role in this. Um, our, our tagline at the RRI is enhancing recovery through science. Um, and so I know from experience that, that science, as scientists and, and people that, that care about the field of science, we have a lot to offer in, in terms of this overall broad mission as a field. Um, so, uh, yeah, sort of working together and, and science matters. I think those are my two primary messages. Yeah, and happy recovery month. This is great. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you for all of this. And I know that our members and listeners will, will be very happy to know all the details about Recovery Research Institute.